What's going on guys? This is Juan with Green and Grounds Lawn Service and in today's video, we are going to be resodding two pallets worth of grass. Um, this client called me up. They said that they found my information on Nextdoor, which I've so highly spoken about. And I highly recommend that you watch my videos regarding the best social media platforms which help my business grow. That being Nextdoor, among others. Anyway, this client reached out. They said that they were looking for resodding. Uh, they had a contractor build them a pergola. And with all of the foot traffic and the machines, they kind of ruined about 900 square feet worth of grass. So I gave them a quote. And while doing that, I also earned them as a recurring lawn mowing customer. So this is gonna be an ongoing customer. And today is the day where we're gonna be installing the grass. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through that process, uh, show you some awesome time lapses of us doing the work. It's just gonna be two of us today. And here we go. And so here, as you can see, we are raking up the area of where we're gonna be installing the grass today. My brother is on the rake. I'm using the garden hoe to kind of get some of those deeper roots. Basically gonna be installing this L-shape over here, this down there. Not all the way down, but just like, kind of like where there's a little step to go up to the pergola. So here we are. And I know the comments are probably gonna say you could just rent a skid steer or get somebody to do it on a skid steer, which will be much easier. But hey, when you're working on a budget and you don't know how to operate one, some good old elbow grease, Good old sweat we'll get the job done so here we go starting with some of the time lapses so let me tell you a little bit about resodding and some of the key factors that you have to consider when you're going to be doing resodding if this is your first second or third time resodding you're still kind of developing the rhythm figuring out what you're going to do how you're going to do it and doing the best job possible so that the grass will actually take if if you are putting new grass on a property, you have to clean up the areas where you're gonna be putting the grass. If there is existing weeds, if there is existing grass that just needs to come out because it's damaged, you have to clear that area out because if you're putting brand new grass on top of it, it's going to decompose. I'll continue explaining after this. Sod has arrived, let's go. Field is prepped. We are ready to start laying. Charlie, how you feeling? Uh, dirty. I'm tired as heck. Here we go. Ready to rock and roll. So picking up where we left off. If you're putting brand new grass on top of existing weeds or old grass, it's going to decompose. Decomposition causes heat, and that's going to kill what's beneath it. But it's also going to damage the root system that you're trying to get started with the brand new sod so you have to clear the area clearing out the area for us took us probably i want to say an hour and a half or two tops and that's just using you know good old rake and a garden hoe now i'm not sure if you might have noticed but while i was talking about the composition we started laying the sod and the way that you want to lay the sod is staggered you're going to lay your establishing row which is going to be you know all lined up one next to the other the second row and from then on you're going to stagger it that way the seams are not lining up perfectly with each other the, what that's going to do is after a while once the grass has been established it's not going to seem like a checkerboard pattern it's going to have a more natural look and even as we've laid it you you kind of see that you don't see too much of a pattern and that's because we've staggered it so that it has a nice natural look Let's take a quick break from this and let me show you some examples of bad resodding that I've seen. This was a job that I came across near where my parents live and it is just lazy work. Unfortunately, this particular job, they didn't clear what was beneath. There had been a bunch of rubble and construction and garbage and there was multiple areas where you stepped on it and you could literally hear plastic water bottles beneath the soil. It, it, it was ridiculous. Anyway, let's get back to the actual proper way to reset the property. And here you see, you know, this is just, this is all one day's work. 
In this particular job site, we actually agreed to come back once a day for two weeks, except on weekends, to water the lawn. The customer was responsible for the other watering of the day. All right, so we are back on the job site, and part of the agreement was I come and water the lawn at least once a day for the first two weeks. Here we go, the next day of watering. Here's a bit of the progress. There's a lot more green than yesterday. We're anticipating about 70% chance of rain tomorrow, so that's gonna help. Can't wait to see what this is looking like in about a week. Now, here we are, guys. One week since installing this grass. We've been coming to water almost every single day. We had two days where there was plenty of rain, so I didn't actually have to come in, but this is the one week checkpoint. The grass looks like it's taking in nicely. It's getting very green, taking into the rest of the yard. Now that particular area over there, the sprinklers aren't reaching over there. So that's really only getting water whenever it rains and whenever I'm here to do my one water a day. So I'm excited to do the second week check-in which is when we're gonna stop coming in um, and the rest is on the owner. The rest is on the owner. Guys, this was 13 days after we did the job. Unfortunately, the owner didn't use the sprinkler as much as we had hoped, which is why it wasn't beautiful and green. 